In a world where busyness is worn like a badge of honor, it's almost impossible to imagine breaking free from the shackles of success. Working long hours, skipping meals, missing or being late to important life events, constantly playing catch up, exhausted to the bones. This has been normalized, especially in the medical and healthcare arena. Practice owners are fleeing to corporate practices or leaving medicine altogether in hopes of recapturing their time and energy. But you are here for a reason and you've been searching for answers. Welcome to Thriving Practice. I'm your host, Tracy Cherpesky. I'm an executive coach and consultant and time leadership expert. I'm mom to two amazing teenagers and a menagerie of adopted furry family members. I am on a mission to help practice owners take back at least one day per week for the rest of their careers so they can focus on healing their patients and falling back in love with their practice. Together we learn, connect with like-minded practice owners and medical business experts, and expand your connection to an international community of peers. In each episode, we discuss the business of medicine and healthcare, how to avoid the pitfalls of success, and how to improve the bottom line, paving the way to exquisite fulfillment in your career and life. Join us each week to learn how you can grow your practice while focusing on what you love most. You'll want to take notes. So let's go. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today for a new episode of Thriving Practice, the business podcast for medical and healthcare practices where we help provider owners grow their business and take back their time. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Justin Maxwell of Big Life Financial. Justin is a tax and wealth strategist and helps business owners, particularly medical professional business owners, plug money leaks, become more efficient with the money earned, and create the certainty needed to live a big life. I really enjoyed this conversation with Justin and his powerful partnerships approach to strategic tax and wealth management is really cool. I'm a big fan of building the life one wants to live, and Justin emphasizes that we don't build a big life and wealth by saving, scrimping, and not living. I have to say I was somewhat surprised to hear a financial strategist talk in terms of scarcity versus abundance mindset, and I was totally geeking out on how Justin talked about philosophy and mindset, so you'll definitely want to listen closely to that. Now, for our listeners who might have student loans, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I mean, if you're in healthcare, you likely do, you're going to want to listen to what Justin says about paying off your loan and how you might be able to capitalize on the tax code that can help you bring your payment down substantially, if not to zero or nearly zero. Our conversation covered a lot with a strong focus on how to reduce the financial stressors that you will likely experience along the way in your career. I recommend that you take notes And reach out to Justin if you're curious about paying down student loans or learning more about how to take charge of your wealth. Justin's parting wisdom is do not let the tax tail wag the dog and dictate your financial life. There's a better way to do this. Now, learning how to get your hard-earned money to work for you is something we hear about a lot. This conversation with Justin highlights several ways to make that happen. So you know what to do. Grab a beverage or a snack and settle in to listen to Justin and his amazing wisdom. Justin, it's so good to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on today. Yeah, really excited to be here. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, I'm really excited to dive in and just learn more and share with our listeners the amazing opportunities that you bring to them. Before we do that, I'd love to hear where you're located. So we're, I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah is where I'm out of. Nice. Uh, Western, Western USA. And you serve? across the country, right? Not Yeah, across the United country. States, every state. Yep. We have cool. clients in pretty much every state. There's a few that we don't, but we're almost in every state. Awesome. Well, tell us the name of your company and maybe just give us a high level overview of what you all do and then we'll go deeper. Yeah. So our the name of our company is Big Life Financial. We're a really unique firm because when people hear financial, they're going to think, oh, this is just another financial person that's going to try and get me to invest in something or do insurance or help me budget something. And while we do help in some of those areas, we uh, attack it in a very niche and unique way. That's something that they, your listeners probably haven't ever had someone attack their finances before. Our goal is to help people capture and recapture opportunity costs. And that some people might have 
and I knew what that is. A lot of people don't. But that is is where we have a dollar going somewhere. So if we dedicate a dollar to paying our mortgage, that dollar is no longer available for us to use in any other way. We can't use it to go shopping. We've lost the opportunity for it to use shopping. We've lost the opportunity for it to help us go on vacation. We've lost the opportunity to help us become an asset. And so as what we're helping people do is instead of helping people recapture and budget their way or save their way to wealth, our goal is to help people be more efficient with the dollars that they're already making and take the efficiencies and help that accelerate their wealth. And so it doesn't feel like you're budgeting or going back, but you can feel more abundant, feel like you're bringing more value and want to make more money because you are super efficient with every dollar you make. So we help people be really strategic and use all the areas that are available to them in a tax code. And then we help people that have student loans or high student loans, help them change that dollar and turn it into assets. And then we help people capture it and get it to work, whether that's back in their business, back in their family or invested. But now they have captured those dollars and get those to use versus having to budget their way and save and scrimp and do what most people do in the financial industry, which is don't buy the boat, don't live your life as much because you need to have this outside event for retirement that's someday coming. We're going to help you find the dollars in the life that you already have. And then you can still live a big life, which is why our name is called Big Life Financial. You can still live the big life now without sacrificing it for some future date. I love that. And I think it's such a different approach and it's a different mindset. Of course, we need to be smart with our money, but there are, I think, so many ways that we can have money work for us. And that's, you know, maybe we hear that a lot, but it sounds like you all offer really practical solutions that help maybe on the tax side, but also on like taking that money and re redirecting it for something that can work for you. Yeah, yeah. we're very much in alignment there. Yeah, it's you're 100% right. There's Everyone is always wanting to sacrifice and put off their lives and put off things they want to do, put off viewing the culture of the world because of this future date or because they can't do it because I I won't have enough money in retirement. When you can structure life you want to live now and love now without having to sacrifice things, you might have to not have as much as you want now because you can't just frivolously just go blow everything away. You have to be smart with it, but you can start taking part in the things you actually enjoy. And it's our opinion that as you start doing that, you then, it has this, this reciprocal effect that now you get, bring more impact, you help more people and you get more money and it accelerates everything because you're living a life of purpose and fulfillment, which a lot of people don't have in this world. And so people are drawn to because you are living a life that you enjoy versus having to scrimp and save and sacrifice and hold off for some future date. And then you're not as happy. People feel it. You're not as productive. Everything can go. I don't know. That's, it's a little bit philosophical, but that's our. That's the reasoning behind what we're doing. I think it's important for us to be philosophical about what we want from life. And I think, you know, dear sweet listeners, sometimes, you know, in, our tra- in your training, they're not taught to like embrace more of a philosophy outside of what they're doing as scientists and as, as medical and healthcare providers. So, and of course, I'm a coach, so of course I'm going to think this way, but I think that this is really useful. And I've seen it work with my clients and I've seen it work out in the world with you know, in circles that I run in, when we commit to the why, you know, like, okay, I want to become, for example, for our listeners, okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a physician and I've decided to have my own practice because I want to do things a certain way. I want to serve at a particular level. Maybe I want to specialize in a certain area. And with the exception of like HIPAA, tax and other laws, I'm going to do it my way. It's hard to do that without having some kind of a philosophy in place. And what is the point of any of this if we're not living a fulfilled life. I don't understand like the mentality. I know it's sort of a hangover from, or a carryover. Maybe it's also a hangover <laughs> um, <laughs> from, the, from like industrial age, right? Like you just work, 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 work. But I don't think that that's really useful for anybody. And we're seeing really high burnout rates with doctors or just in the medical field in general. And, you know, pandemic notwithstanding, I still think that this is going to continue to be an issue if we don't focus on the kind of life that we really want to live. So we support, in my case, for my clients, in your case, support your clients in achieving that. So I love that. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, I think we're very much in alignment there. That's very much our philosophy. So this is yeah. uh, cool that we're in that, that same boat. And hopefully your listeners can sense that power behind it and behind it as well. Yeah, it's just like, why? Why go to school all those years and incur, and we'll come back and talk about student loans in a minute, and cr- it most medical people that I know had massive medical or student loan debt, you know, to go through their training. 
And like, what's the point if you're going to be paying these loans off for however much time or it looks like it's going to go that way and you're just slogging and slogging for what? Right. So I love that you offer more freedom for these individuals, which I think has a, and the only kind of trickle down that actually works, which is, you know, increased fulfillment, decreased stress, more, I think more innovation comes through when we're not stressed out and worried about money and, you know, all bunched up about all these things. So. Yeah. One of my mentors that in this space, and he, he has the two mindsets, you have the scarcity mindset and the abundant mindset. And when you're in the scarcity mindset, you're not productive. You're very like, hold on. You're not thinking outside yourself. You're not being innovative. It's just survival. And when you start thinking abundantly and you have the abundant or growth mindset, it just changes your whole, everything opens up to you. You get more ideas. You become more innovative. You solve more problems. You help more people. There's so many different ways. You can be scarce in your business. You can be scarce in your family. You can be scarce in your, scarce in your finances. And I've found that as finances get solved, typically that solves a few other problems too, because that has ripple effects and stress-wise in other people's areas. And when that gets solved, it allows people to switch from scarcity into abundance in more than just finance, which is very helpful for people. Yeah. And, you know, so for our listeners, yes, mindset's hugely important. And there are some practical things that you can do to decrease your stress around money and maybe, you know, what the next 20 odd years looks like as you're looking at, you know, will I ever retire one day? And if so, what kind of life am I going to lead then? So with pushing the retirement into maybe some other arena, I think one of the biggest financial stressors is student loans. So I would love to hear if you can tell us maybe broad strokes and a few details about how you support um, specifically medical and dental practice owners in figuring out a better way to navigate paying down their student loans or paying them off. Yeah, this is a really cool opportunity for people. And I really want people to understand that this is available to pretty much 19 out of 20 practice owners that we evaluate and look at. This is available to so almost all of your listeners that are in the United States have this opportunity. And the people that are in the United States, it's likely that your countries offer something similar to this because every country has some way to supplement education. And this is the United States way of supplementing education. And this is really unique too, because the medical practice business owner, whether you're a dental or a doctor or a physician, you are making enough money to pay off your student loans, but it still is this huge overarching burden on you of like, I don't know if, what if I, what if I lose my job or what happens if I get sick or what happens if something happens? So it's this huge stressor on your family because it's such a large amount and you can't declare bankruptcy. It will always be there. And we've seen the outrage that's occurred within our current political environment over student loans. Like that's why Biden is trying to do the, the 20, 10 to 20,000 forgiveness because so many people are so burdened down by their student loans and dentists and physicians are not exempt from those feelings of just, this is so big and so massive for my situation that causes a ton of stress. So this, there are solutions though, and that's the, that's the key point I want to gather is, is there are solutions. So since 1990, in the 1990, not 1990, but in the 90s, the United States has put in place slowly ways to supplement education. Most countries will supplement it on the front end where they'll provide opportunities for college at a cheap rate or free college. The United States does it on the back end because it hasn't ever been passed in the front end. But there ha it has been passed in law on the back end. So starting in the 90s with Clinton, prior to the 90s, you could declare bankruptcy and have your student loans wiped out as well. But too many people were doing that. They were just right after they got out of school, they just declare bankruptcy. They just build their credit for the next seven years. And they'd be fine. They'd go a little left, but the student loan would be gone. And so they put in place where you couldn't declare bankruptcy, but they offered a different solution for how you would pay it back. So instead of having to do what's called a balanced pay repayback, which is what you see with every other their loan in existence, whether it's a car loan, a mortgage, it's where you take the balance, you take the time frame, and you're going to spit out a monthly payment. That's balance-based repayment. That's what most people think. And that's what most people choose when they choose to pay back their student loans. And that's why the, the, the payment is so high and it causes so much stress. But that's not the only option. There's another option called income-driven repayment. Income-driven repayment has multiple options and multiple programs that allow people to get into those programs and severely reduce their monthly payment. And a lot of people will say, well, that sounds like it's just for people that don't make a lot of money, income-driven repayment, and it's not going to be an effect to me. I don't want to do that because it's still going to be a high payment. However, 
business owners have the ability, like I mentioned, most of the time to reduce their payment at really close to zero and oftentimes to zero. So even though they're making good money, we see that we can help business owners still qualify and meet the criteria of the income-driven repayment plan and still reduce their monthly payment, oftentimes all the way to zero. And one of the best parts of the income-driven repayment plan is that it has a built-in forgiveness state. So it's already built in. So it's similar to the to the charitable 10-year program, where if you work at a charity, the forgiveness state is built in at the end of 10 years, your loan gets forgiven. It's the same thing with these income-driven repayment plans, where there's a built-in forgiveness date 25 years out, where if I make payments for 25 years of whatever my income dictates it is, at the end of 25 years, whatever is left, I get my income forgiven. And so we can take people's student loans from 2000 a month to zero for 25 straight years. And so that means you're saving $2,000 every single month that was dedicated to paying off a loan, but now gets to stay with you. So it's exceptionally powerful in the fact that now you have 2000 extra of cash flow in your life was not there previously that now you can control and dictate where it goes and how it's utilized. There's one important aspect here that I don't want to gloss over and it's really important is when you get your loan forgiven, whether it's in 10 years or 25 years, whatever, whatever loan forgiveness program you're in, when you get your loan forgiven, the government gives you that loan as income. So 25 years from now, if you make $200,000 and your loan is 400000 on your taxes, you're going to show you made $600,000. They're going to give it to you as income. So you are going to pay taxes on that event. So it is super important for people to realize that they have to prepare for that taxable event. So they can't just take that $2,000 of cash flow and spend it every single month. Not only is that being a consumer and not really driving your purpose and values forward, but you are also missing out on the opportunity to get those dollars working for you in the future. But you have to take a portion of it, either all of it or a portion of it, and save it for 25 years. And then you have enough to pay the taxes and you have an asset still. One of the most powerful things, in my opinion, is that if we took like that $2,000 example, 2000 a month saved for 25 years, if you put that into just a high, just a very basic high interest environment, just a very basic, safe, high interest vehicle, you're going to have eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars of cash in there. Your tax bill is going to be, I don't know, one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars. So you have plenty of dollars to pay tax, and you've created this massive asset for you that can still propel you for the rest of your life. That was not going to be there because those dollars, that two thousand a month, was one hundred percent dedicated to be a, a, an expense. It was 100% going to be a student loan payment. But now because you took advantage of this program, freed up the cash, now you could do something with it and create something that was not there before. You created an asset out of an expense. I wish more people knew that this was available to them because I think the dedication and number of years and the financial commitment to getting advanced degrees and getting you know medical degrees and whatnot is so huge. And I think, you know, I hear this a lot from people in the medical community that it's stressful already. It's a hard environment to work in. If we can diminish stressors all around them, how much better their lives would be. Right. It's so powerful. And some people are like, well, that sounds too good to be true or this. People need to understand that this, whether it's the tax code or whether it's things, they're just things we don't know. And it sounds too good to be true. But these things are built into the law. The IRS tax code is law. And there's things available to people that people don't take advantage of and they're missing out on. This is just like that, except for it's through the Department of Education instead of the IRS. Well, sitting here thinking, you know, after 25 years, you've got eight, nine hundred thousand dollars if you're paying about two thousand dollars a month into, say, a, a money market account or something like that. That's that's pretty safe, you know, minus the taxes that would need to pay out that hundred fifty or whatever. That's not an insignificant chunk of change. And if most yeah. of us are thinking about retirement, which is what, I'm sorry to all the financial planners, but it's the thing that we hear about all the time. Retire, retirement, right? Don't buy the latte. Right? We were joking about this before we started yeah. recording. Like, drink your freaking latte. It's, if it's going to make you happy, drink a latte. But if it, you know, and your $3 or whatever you don't spend on coffee, I, I haven't done the math, but I don't think that's $2,000 a month worth of coffee. So, and if you're spending that much on coffee, maybe we need to talk. But yeah. Of course, we need to be smart. Like you said earlier, we, we want our clients to be smart with their money. We want them to be able to, you know, save for retirement. 
it has been proven time and time and time again. We don't save our way to retirement. We spend. And by spending, I mean investing, right? Taking that money, that 2000 or whatever the student loan amount is that you can work it down to and redirecting that and putting it into something. Do I know you said your the your organization doesn't directly do this, but do you ever work with other professionals to help your clients figure out what to do with that student loan money that they would have otherwise written as an expense? Yeah, that, that we, we definitely do. We have a ton of different opportunities for people. Typically is what we will utilize is we're going to utilize just a cash value, high early overfunded life insurance policy first, because that gets that's about as safe as a place you can keep your money. Plus it's liquid to you. So even though the dollars are growing over time inside of a life insurance policy, a lot of people think, oh, I've made that expense. But those dollars are sitting there growing at 800000 Like, let's just say we're at year 15 and we have $600,000 in there. That 600000 I can utilize elsewhere into investments. So that leaves the door open, but I'm growing it at about 4 to 5% instead of a money market. I mean, money markets might go up in the near future, but in the past, they've been around 2 and 2.5%. Two and um, then if it was a savings account, it'd be less than a percent for most, yeah. most time. So I'm saving in a high earning interest vehicle that's still liquid to me that still allows me access. And that is what we do at our firm is we help quarterback and connect people with investment advisors that specialize in different things. So we have invest advisors on our team that specialize in non-stock market investments. So a lot of private market opportunities where they can access opportunities where other small businesses are raising capital and you can invest in those small businesses or you can invest in real estate opportunities. And then we have other people on our team that do, if the person likes the stock market, they can invest in the stock market still. So we have those people on our team. I don't do that personally. I'm not a registered investment advisor, but we do quarterback and coordinate depending on the needs of the individual of where that money needs to go. So, Because once people start grasping the fact that money starts growing and compounding and working for you, they want it to do more than just 4% because life insurance isn't, shouldn't, shouldn't even be the final destination, but it's a nice holding spot until we're ready to make a decision on something bigger and better that we know that we want to invest in. And we know that area that could be back into your business, could be to buy another practice, could be into a private opportunity, or it could just be what everyone else is doing typically in the stock market arena, but we'll help coordinate that and help them choose what's best for their situation and what meets their internal needs. And so we help that process go along. It definitely sounds like that bridge. You know, it's, it's like between the CPA and between the like, investment or financial advisors, like there's, not, there's a gap. And it sounds like you all fill that in a way that is really supportive. Again, kind of going the big picture, the 20,000 foot view. Yes, it handles the money situation and it helps level things off. And then from where I sit, what's more important, I think money is important, but even more important than that is like, Emotional well-being, stress levels decreasing, you know, additional burnout triggers and targets, you know, decreased and and handled. Right. I don't know if anybody listening has ever, you know, been in a situation where money has been a stressor, but when it, when it can be handled, it's amazing how much of the rest of life gets better. You know, it's a basic need. Sorry, good, bad, or indifferent. Money is the currency that we use, and so we have to work with what we've got for now. So here we are with people who are, you know, maybe wishing they could make a bigger impact, but haven't figured out how to do it. Or they're so saddled with the debt, even if they're able to make the payment, it's still there. I think a good example is my son's orthodontist. I was chatting, the wife manages the practice and the husband is the orthodontist. And she was like, oh, I mean, we still have like $300,000 in debt that we're paying off from you know, husband's school and he's many years into practice. I'm going to send this episode to them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's such a bummer because you're going out and you're doing, providing this great service, healing bodies, helping people, you know, correct their bites and, you know, all the things that contribute to other people's well-being. And here, you know, in addition to decrease, you know, taking care of the finances can help decrease the stress levels and the, you know, just, just coming back to what you said earlier. Yeah. That, the, the better we feel, the better choices we can make, the more energy we can put into the things that we say we want to put our energy into and sometimes don't yeah. have a chance to get there. I had I heard a story from a dentist and this really resonated with me because I didn't think this was a big a problem, but I guess it is in dentistry is when dentists so stressed about money or things aren't quite right. Like if they have a patient that they did a crown on comes back in for their x-ray and on the x-ray it shows they did their crowning correctly. If they're struggling with money, 
they're not going to tell the patient that they messed up because that costs them more money. But if they are sufficient and doing well and feel like I'm fine, now they have the ability to say, I need to fix that. I need to do more to actually solve the problem for this person and do what I promised to do. Because the patient has no idea if it's right or wrong, but the dentist does internally. And he was, he was explaining to me that it happened more often than you think if the dentist isn't right, that they will overlook things because they know it's going to cost them more money because they made a mistake or they made a flu paw that mm. messed up and they have to spend more money to fix that. But if they're fine and the stress is reduced, they'll fix it. They'll help that client. They'll tell the client, the client will love that they were told, hey, this person is out for me. They have my best interest in mind. They'll look for friends and everything just starts to reverberate off of that. So it's a huge, it's a huge deal. And I'm sure that's the same thing in, in the medical industry and the physician, probably not the same level, but Somewhere, I'm sure there's a correlation inside the physician world that would be the same type of event for physicians. They're stressed, they're burned down, they want to spend more money, more time on this person. And because they don't say something they should have said that could have solved something, that would have been the trigger in that person's life to propel that person forward. So it's like this whole, we're just trying to leave ripples along the way to help people. We're trying to help the physicians and the dentists to then help their clients and then they help someone else trying to change the world one person at a time. So yeah. And not to use fear as something that would make someone think differently, but I don't know if you make a mistake like that, something that's pretty obvious if somebody goes to another dentist. I mean, a lawsuit is way more expensive than fixing a car. Right. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. The way the, people yeah, do things that, these days, right? Right. Yeah. That's something you have to consider. Yeah. You don't want fear to be the motivator, but that's why mm-hmm. we can solve that problem by solving the financial piece so that they don't ever yeah. have to make that choice when they're in that moment. They can say, I need to step up and say, I messed up on this. I need to fix this. Let's get it done right now. Fix it and get it going. Yeah. I want to highlight one word that you used that I love to hear. And it's new in my mindset around like abundance or lack, sufficient. Sufficiency yeah. is everything. <laughs> it's kind of like saying have enough, right? But enough has a different connotation. Sufficiency to me has that connotation that there's just no, you know, there's just so much freedom and ease around that, right? So I love that. I just wanted to highlight that, that you said that. And it really got my, got my brain cells awake. Yeah. I really like that this is a synonym, that word is certainty. Mm. We create certainty in our finances and then we can do so much good. When there's a lot of uncertainty, which unfortunately I don't, Oftentimes when people only invest in the stock market, like that's their only option. When the stock market's down, there's a lot of uncertainty and we're emotional creatures. And even if we're really good at just holding on and being patient with it and letting it bounce back, which it will eventually, that can have a negative effect on our, our being during that dip, during that downfall, because it's, yeah. we're, we're, it's kind of gulping to see how big it gets. And so by having other opportunities where we have certainties, like if we're creating certainty out of our student loan payments. We know that this, these dollars are growing safely and steadily. And I don't have to be as upset when I see that dip because I have these certain dollars here that are yeah. always doing their job for me. And I know that it's going to be okay because I, I can handle, this is growing well for me. This is going to provide certainty and, and benefit for me in the future. And I know that this isn't my only bucket. So when I'm seeing it go down, it's not I, I don't have to fear that even if it goes all the way to zero, I still have this other option. So it provides people some level-headedness around the volatility of the market, which can occur, which will happen. It definitely happens. So the certainty piece, when you capture these dollars, I really encourage people to put dollars into certainty opportunities versus volatile opportunities. Yeah, I'll level that off. It's an important piece of the picture. Well, I've loved our conversation. I would like to ask you two more questions before we sign off. Um, The first one is where can people find you so they can inquire and learn more? Yeah, so... Best place is just to check out our website, biglifefinancial.com. If you want to meet with me and just see like, is the student loan thing for me? And I really want to, I didn't say this, but like, let's just say we, I had a doctor. He's been out of school forever. He's 66. He still had student loans. We talked to him. We were still able to help him. So it doesn't matter how long you've been out of school. As long as you have 50,000 or more of student loans, we can probably do something. The more you have, the the greater chance we can actually help and, and make it work for you. But just know that it doesn't matter how long you've been out of school, we can make it work. Um, but if you are looking to have a conversation with me around that, or you want to have a conversation around some of our other services, you can get on my calendar by going to biglifefinancial.com slash TRP. TRP. Got it. Yeah. We'll make sure that's in the show notes. 
so that it's easily clickable and people can just pop on over there and get on your calendar. And then if people, LinkedIn is a good place too, if they want to check out my LinkedIn, it's just uh, Justin Maxwell. You can Google me in or okay. on LinkedIn and they can find me there. So we'll put that in the show notes too. Just click. That's all you got to do. We yeah. try to make it easy right. for people. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, final question is just if you have any parting advice that you want to leave with our listeners. I think for me, it's, there's a saying that says, don't allow the tax tail to wag the dog, control where the dog goes. So don't allow, you can change that into, don't allow your finances to dictate where your life goes. Similar to what you said earlier, create the life you want to live and build the business, build the financial structure around that, that fit what's going to allow you to build most fulfilled. And we can help with that, but there's plenty of other professionals in the world that can help with that. But don't do it backwards. Don't allow the financial piece to dictate what you're doing. Build the life you want and build the finance and business around that life versus do it the other way around. Sage advice. Life and business are worth enjoying most of the time. And if we can get to like 80%, we're doing all right. So for the overachievers, just remember 80% is perfect. (laughs) So, well, Justin, I so appreciate you coming on today. I really, I think this is really valuable information for our listeners to hear. And uh, just thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Thriving Practice. I appreciate you coming here week after week, dear listener, to listen and learn how to elevate your leadership, grow your practice, and to think and act like the high impact CEO provider that you're meant to be. I have one request of you. If you've benefited from this show, go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review with your thoughts on the show. Your feedback and review help us get in front of other amazing practice owners just like you. Thank you again for listening and until next time.